Wednesday morning, um, in the middle of a snowstorm, we actually got three inches of snow, and uh, it was about 7.30 in the morning, uh, two does started working their way through the woods towards me. Uh, I was in the stand by about 6 a.m., just as it was just getting light enough to see. Uh, about 7.30, I had two does working through the woods towards me. And you didn't have any kids with you this time, did you? No, no. I, okay. not this time. And uh, guys, guys, quiet. And uh, so they were on track to come right by my stand. I got ready with my crossbow. The lead deer came down the trail just like she was supposed to. At 18 yards, I just made a quick sound, just a bip and she stopped because you heard something and that put her completely broadside in my shooting lane and uh, it was an 18 yard shot after i shot uh, she only went about 75 yards and piled up so it was it happened really fast um like it yeah. always does <laughs> it was a good it was a good hunt it was a good hunt too <laughs> it was pretty too with the snow yeah. coming down Hi there and welcome to my channel, A Country Life. I'm Jennifer and you guys just heard from Ward. He was just giving you guys the rundown of his um, deer hunting story and we are going to get onto that here in just a couple minutes here but I want to share with you guys something really exciting. I have become a Variety Fun partner. You saw during cranberry harvest that Variety Fun had sent a um, box of snacks to us and I took those out for the harvest workers and there was a whole bunch of fun snacks in there and everybody had a great time picking through and eventually, even the ones that weren't their favorites, I eventually was able to get rid of all the snacks by the end of harvest. Variety Fun is a subscription-based company. You can sign up to get them every other week, or they can come once a month. You can cancel it at any time if you're just not in the need for snacks. But I mean, really, who doesn't need snacks? Okay, so let's open this up. So they have two styles of boxes. They, they have the Variety Fun box, and they also have a Variety Fit box. Now I am hoping that next month I'm going to be getting the Variety Fit box so I can give you guys a peek into that, but this is the December box. So if you guys want all of the snacks that are in this box, you need to order it by December 7th. And I am going to pop up a coupon code right there for you that's going to save 30% off of your first box. And let me just give you a little rundown here. This is what it looks like. Except, guess what? There are two things missing. There was a little bag of Oreo cookies, like about this size, and there was another bag of goldfish crackers. So what happened is that I was doing laundry this morning, and then, no, what was I doing? Oh, <laughs> what actually was happening this morning is that Warren and Peter were out hunting, and Maria and I were watching a vlog. Okay, I think we are watching a cooking vlog, and you know, we're like, boy, it's really quiet. Where did Joe go to? Well, after the vlog was done and we um, went and did a little investigating, he had grabbed the Variety Fun box, went back to his room, locked the door, and when we went knock, 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 he said, who is it? Was it? And when he finally let us in, there was an empty goldfish bag and an empty mini Oreo bag. So that is already missing from our box. But let's get a look at it over here. So we have here, we have Bada Bean Bada Boom. This is sea salt crunchy broad beans. That's interesting. I've never ever heard of that. Of course, Snyder pretzels. We've heard of that. Honey Teddy Grahams. We have some more pretzels. This is exciting. I don't believe they have these in the last box. Corn nuts. And then we have these Remy's and Abby's cookies. Yes, we're going to let you guys pick out something here. Uh, we have more Teddy Grahams. So Oreos. These Remy's here. I think it's Remy's or Remy. I'm not sure. But anyway, these are like just little mini graham crackers made with whole wheat flour. Yeah. And then Abby's cookies, again, they're just like a wholesome, delicious um, little bitty cookies. Did you ever get these yeah. cookies? Which ones? Show us. Get the ones with that symbol on it because they're delicious. <laughs> with the picture of the grandma? Yeah. Okay, there's one more mini Oreo pack. We got um, a little trail what are mix. These? Oh, some trail mix. Cherry. What do we have? We have, have chocolate a... cherry. What are these? I've never seen these before. Co Cooper Street granola cookie bakes. Okay, we have chocolate cherry and what is this one? Oatmeal cranberry. Yay for cranberries. And then I also Oh my like... gosh. Dad is going to love yeah. these. 
Oh, we got another one of like both things. Oh, another like Cooper, it. Cooper Street. This one is blueberry pomegranates. Peanuts. Some peanuts, of course. We have some unsalted cashews. More of those Ooh, cookies. Ooh, more grandma's cookies. The chocolate ones. We didn't get these in the last oh. box. What are these? Okay, look. There's three of them. There's butter butter. No, what are they called? Bada bean, bada boom. Sea salt, garlic, and onion. And oh, here's something sweet sriracha. Dude. Maria found a cashy bar. This I want this. Hey, no, I'm taking it. Oh, boy. Everybody wants the I same thing. So there you have it. That is the fun box for this month. All right, so everyone's picking out what they Daddy want. Cookies. It um, is 1016, um, which means it is snack wait, time at our house. Peanut. Cookies. Yeah, peanut cookies. butter. My tummy is I'm growling. Gonna have the cookies. You're gonna pick which ones? Chocolate chip? Yep. Peter picked, picked the, the chocolate brownie. chocolate brownie. Okay, let's try not to make any crumbs. Mm. <laughs> so the nice thing about these little prepackaged sure. snacks, yeah, I, mean, I know that it's more packaging and stuff like that. However, I do like that they're all around a hundred to 150 calories. It's kind of nice to just get a little snack into everybody. But not overdo it. Oh, there's corn nuts. Yes, yes. there are. <laughs> you know what you want. <laughs> okay, so I do know that today's video is supposed to be all about us cutting up the deer, how Warren goes about doing that, how I package everything, and kind of how we cut steaks and roasts and all of that good stuff and the tools we use. And it is going to be happening. But but there was a little cranberry marsh work that had to be done. And so uh, we just came off of a number of days of a really, really cold weather. We're having a little warm up here this weekend and then we're gonna go right back into some very, very cold weather. Uh, temps, overnight lows of probably very much, very, very close to zero, I think is what I just heard recently, or maybe like five degrees or something like that overnight. But Warren has to put water up in the ditches that surround each individual cranberry bed. And so he there's a system of bulkheads and so he had to um, do some bulkhead work this morning he had to go and put uh, boards in and things like that and i thought he mentioned something about having to cut some new boards i should have listened more carefully but i didn't <laughs> um so he's out doing that i did just hear the truck so that means that he's probably uh getting closer no i still don't see him so anyway um that is that's what he's doing and so we are going to get to the deer here today but i thought i'd give you a quick peek this is what we're gonna be having for lunch. I just pulled this out of the refrigerator. I had put it together the other day. This was on my menu plan and it is called chicken noodle hot dish or chicken noodle casserole, some, whatever you wanna call it. Um, what you do is you just have some cooked chicken and then you also cook up some egg noodles, okay? And I think the chicken, it's around two or three cups of chicken. And then the egg noodles, it's supposed to be around 12 ounces or so, something like that. Then in a large bowl, you just mix together um, a can of cream of chicken soup and I should just grab the recipe here and about a half a cup of mayo and a little lemon juice some salt and pepper mix that all up to make a nice creamy sauce add in some red diced pepper and some green diced pepper just bell pepper like a small onion diced as well and then this is some Monterey Jack cheese and some cubes of sharp cheddar cheese. And I mix that all up in there. I'm going to put this into the oven at, I suppose I should get that started, at 350 degrees. It should go for 30 minutes, but since I did make it up the other day, put it in the fridge, you know, it's going to take a little longer because it is ice. <clears throat> okay, so I took the quarters off. I took the front shoulders off. I took the hind quarters off. Um, <laughs> I don't cut any bone, I just work it down and pop the, the hip joint that was right there to take the quarter off. The front shoulders aren't attached by bone anyway, so they come right off. There is a little bloodshot meat where the arrow went in. All this will get cleaned up. We don't save any of the bloodshot that all goes out to the carcass pile. Um, One thing we found is that, yeah, to get the best quality meat you don't keep anything that's marginal. Yeah. <laughs> you only keep the best. Right. When I open up a pack of meat, I want to know that I'm going to use every every bit of it. And so... And sometimes there's a little deer hair that is stuck on the carcass left over from skinning it. That all has to get picked off by yep. hand because we don't want any hair in our meat. I know I've seen some places will actually use like a 
torch to singe off any extra hair, but we don't. We just pick it off piece by piece just to be sure that we get it all. Keep this going. deer was shot on Wednesday. We like to age the meat for a few days as long as it's cold. If yeah. it's warm out, it has to get quartered and put into a refrigerator because you cannot hang meat when it's warm out. It has to be, uh, the best is if it's right around upper 30s. Like ref I mean, it really has to be refrigerator temperature. Yes, if you're hanging it and it's warmer, say in the 50s or 60s, that's too warm. You're going to have meat spoilage. Warm. Yep. So right now I'm just trimming off anything that's a little air dried. Um, we want nothing but the best meat for our freezer. So the key to good meat is trimming. You got to trim. And this is a hind quarter here. This is a hind quarter. This will be roasts and uh, maybe some steak. Anything that uh, does not make roast and steak will be ground into hamburger, yep. but everything has to be clean. No hair, no fat. You trim it very, very lean. Mm -hmm. oh, and I see you're just using basically your, your buck knife, or, right? Well, um, this was my dad's knife. Um, forever growing up, this is what he used to gut out his deer and to cut up meat, and it holds an edge really well. And for me, um, I carry this with me now um, to remember my dad, and I always got out all my deer with his knife, and uh, I cut up my deer with his knife. Yeah. So it, <clears throat> it's a good way to connect. For those of you that really want kind of the details here of, of um, you know, cutting up meat here, you can, I'm just gonna try to get in kind of close here. Sure. Or and just kind of see how you're, you can see like right here, this is kind of like an air dried portion. So he's gonna come through and he's gonna cut all of that off because- And you just fillet it away. Yep. You just, just take really the very, thin. make sure you get all the fat. We like to trim our venison very lean. Uh, usually the wild fat can sometimes flavor the meat. So we take as much fat off as we can. Yep. Basically all of it. <laughs> Basically. So now what I'm gonna do, yeah, what kind of stuff is that? Clear this is yellow. the tendon. Yep. This is the tendon. See, it's very flexible. See? Mm -hmm. There's lots of tendons. Right. You take like all of that. And then little bits of meat that might be near a tendon or kind of real close yeah, to a this bone. this would be like hamburger. Right. Then oh. we make that all into hamburger. So if we have time yet tonight, we will probably grind. Yeah. And Warren so put in an estimate already, and he said maybe 20 pounds of hamburger. Maybe. So we'll see. So I'm just following the bone down. That's all meat right door. there. That's Sam. A little bit of meat that's left on the bone here, this will be all hamburger. Uh -huh. And hamburger uh, is always a great thing for kids to cut up because the only thing it has to do is be clean and off the bone. There isn't any certain cut that's required. Um, I like to fillet off the dry part. Someone. So that's there. Gonna be... See, that is ready for the grinder. Yep. That's good hamburger. And then, like this here, this, you I'll might just... get a little bit more, right? Oh, yeah. I'll just fillet off like that. Good so, stuff. this is just the dry part that was on the surface. Yep. And then I'll take this and I'll trim that up just a little more. That's ready for hamburger. Hamburger. Awesome. <laughs> so and now this left. is the hind quarter. Yeah. Um, you kind of follow the the tissue lines and work this down. Is this the one that has a gland in it? Yes, and that's okay. what I'm going to take out right now. Awesome. You don't really want to cook the glands. Um, because they can flavor the meat. Where are they? I'll show you. It'll show you in just a second here. 
right there it is. See it? See that dark spot? Mm -hmm. That is the gland. Mm. And there are a lot of ways to cut up meat. This is just how we do it. Oh gosh, yeah. I yeah, definitely a, don't uh, think that this is the I'm only way to do it. I'm not an official meat cutter. <laughs> I've just started helping my dad when I was a kid. And when Jennifer and I were married, my dad wasn't going to help cut up for all. He would have helped, but I mean, he wasn't going to cut my deer up anymore. Nope. I was a big boy. I had to cut my own deer. So you kind of learn by doing. Yeah. Those were hard years, weren't they? I seemed to always be pregnant at hunting season and yeah. the smell of the raw meat and just being so tired. And I um, remember you... a few. So here's the gland right Okay, there. and there. It's right there. Yep. Whoops. See and it? there's the gland, yep, and that big kind of hunk of fat. So Here that's going to go into the scrap box. Yeah. So now we're just going to um, separate the hindquarter into <coughs> the different, uh, I don't know all the cuts of meat. Right. As far as the official terminology, but Joe, shh, shh. we know what we like as far as roasts. Yeah, we're yeah. pretty. We are very, I'm very. No, I'll basic. trim all this off yet. But this right here makes a great roast. Yes. I'll trim this dryness from the outside. I'll trim this off. Uh huh. Uh, I can do that right now Mom? to show you. Mom. He what, honey? Touching it. Peter, I'm please don't touch it. Oh, if he off. sees a deer hair, he can pull it off. Yep. Fillet knives for filleting fish actually work good too for cutting up deer. They uh, you want something that holds an edge quite well. Yeah, so I was just kind of saying before, we don't label our meat real fancy like um, I label it steak, roast. Actually, the steaks, we've gone to doing two kinds of steaks, butterfly steak and thick steak is what we call them. So I'll, I'll change it up that way for labeling. Otherwise, roasts is just roast. I don't decipher out. So there is out a cleaned up roast. Rump roast or sirloin or anything like that. And you always have to look it over. There was a little piece of a deer hair. We don't want that. Right. So. Oh, the jello. Oh, yeah. So then the meat, Warren will just put the meat here into this bowl or, you know, all of these uh, stainless steel bowls here. I eventually will take these inside and then I'm always on the packaging committee. So that's what I do. Weigh up everything, put the labels on it. Now this piece of hindquarter makes great steak. We're gonna square it up. We're gonna butterfly these where you cut like three quarters of the way through and then all the way through and there you have a small butterfly steak. Butterfly steak? Yep. And you can see, yeah, we cut our steaks. I mean, obviously the size of your deer is going to determine the size of the steaks. And so we have some small ones and sometimes larger steaks. But I actually like the small ones. <laughs> I think they cook up nicely. You get a nice kind of edge with a nice... And when I get to the end, that just becomes hamburger. So, Mom, is that hamburger or is that hamburger? You tell me which one. Uh, yes. Steak? Yes. And I want to just point out these, this cutting board that we're using. So, what did we used to use? Like countertop? We used to use a uh, remnant countertop. Which right. worked, but sometimes they didn't uh, hold up quite as well. Right. Over time, you know, you'd get a lot of cut marks in them, and then I wasn't sure if they were getting cleaned as well as I wanted them to. So then we went to these cutting boards, and these are called like sports... called a sportsman's board. Yeah, sportsman's board or something. And so we pick them up, I think, at Fleet Farm. Yep. I, I know at one point we wanted, we were going to order. Did we order one of these through Amazon? We may have. I don't know, because we have this one, which is big, here. And then we have this smaller one here. We have this smaller one here. And so these are really nice because they can just be bleached. And they're just a nice big, just a nice big size. I know some of the recipes that I like to make for an Italian shredded venison. I know that one particularly takes like a four pound roast. So I'll make sure I have a couple of those. I'll make sure I have a couple of smaller roasts if I just want to make something where I'm adding a lot of potatoes and things to it. So yeah, it's just kind of 
package it how you're going to use it. That's really the most important thing. I want to add too is I do not cut through any bone. Um, yeah, and we don't. We don't include any bone with our meat. We uh -uh. do it all boneless. And uh, venison that I've had that has the bone in it, usually that imparts a flavor, and I don't care for that. So yeah, I don't either. We do all completely boneless. Now, like this part of the hind quarter has a lot of sinew and connective yep. tissue in it. This, I actually, some people say oh, it makes a good roast because you can cook it down and shred it and whatnot, but oh. I actually make this all into hamburger. Yeah, because we'll cut, you'll and cut those. You can see there's a lot of tendons and connective tissue. I actually cut that end off. So then I actually cut this down so it'll actually fit into our grinder. Yeah. Good. The other thing you got to remember too is when you're cutting steak, you always want to cut cross grain. Now see, right. by making this smaller, I cut with the grain of the meat, but as you saw on the butterfly steak, you always cut cross grain so you get that cross grain cut. Then you get a more tender cut of meat. Yes. Okay, so this is what we call thick steaks. I so cut these... them about an inch thick. Yep. And they're, they're kind of narrow. We get some bigger steaks as we get into other cuts of meat, but uh -huh. this is the remainder of the hind quarter, and I saw an opportunity to cut some steaks, so I did. Yep. And one rule of thumb with cutting venison is cut off anything you're not willing to eat. Right. So if it looks good and you'll eat it, keep it. If yep. you won't eat it, get rid of it. Get rid of it. And, Working on the back uh, straps. Yep, Warren's got the carcass in now. And he's pulling out the back strap. So that's the long muscle that goes all the way from the neck to the tailbone. So did you just kind of separate it with your fingers to begin with? Well, or? first you take off the fat and then you have to take off the flank. Okay. And then uh, you just work down on the bone. You let the bone be your guide and you work down. And now I'm at the backbone, so now I'm just filleting it off of the backbone. Okay. And this is probably some of my favorite meat right here because it makes awesome steaks and it also makes great mini roasts. What are we going to do today? Whatever you want to do. Oh. Clear. Yeah. We good? Clear. Action. Cut. Cut, 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 it's cut. Yeah, literally cut. <laughs> More stupid jokes. So we are cutting some stew meat here. And Sam over here is working on, what's that gonna be, hamburger? Yep. Yep, so hamburger. Warren's in the background telling really, really dumb jokes. <laughs> Been, it's been a series of dumb jokes. We were sad before that the camera battery died right when he was telling one of his bad, hey, bad jokes. But it yeah, <laughs> you have to. Looks like a now that's like a Boone and Crockett backstrap right there. That's a Boone and Crockett. Wow, well, it looks good. <laughs> it's that's nice. A, it's a nice one. Hey, this yeah, should make a good I thumbnail. Just thumbnail. hold on here. Dun, 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 dun. Oh yeah, this will be good. Are you looking at right in here? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> okay, do it again. Awesome, that's perfect. That has to move. <laughs> do it again. Do it again. Still doing it. Come. 
You got some by yourself? Yes. Nice. With the knife? Yeah. So Warren's just kind of taking the layers off here, off the carcass, because in between the layers of stop, um, stop, smart. fat, <laughs> there is some more meat. I'm just trimming off anything that has any bloodshot. From uh -huh. So now you have this flank, which makes great hamburger. You could do flank steak, but I don't. It yeah, all goes we don't. All goes to burger. Hamburger. Just got it yep. I don't do anything with the ribs either because there's really nothing there to get. So what happens when we bring the meat inside then? These are the two that are gonna be hamburger, so I'm just gonna saran those and actually keep those in our airlock because it is cold enough. The airlock is just a little like, like space in between two doors. So anyway, we're gonna be putting that there to keep it cold. And then I'm just gonna go through and start packaging all of this up. I'm just gonna set up my system with my bags, my saran wrap, my scale. Uh, a marker, my tape, and just get everything all set up so that I can just quickly move through and get this all packaged up. This is also the time where I will do any final picking if there happens to be a hair or if something didn't get trimmed to my uh, specifications. I will do a final trimming at this point. So that was really fast getting that wrapped up. You saw that Maria helped me at the very end there. And so a couple pointers. One, make sure that you stock up with your wrapping supplies in advance. Trust me, if you're getting even anywhere near low on freezer paper, you want to pick that up. I mean, I guess now we have online shopping, but <laughs> before we had online shopping, if, if like our Walmart or Cops, if those stores were out, they were gonna be out for a long time. So I like to always make sure that I always have an extra one of these like this. I have this much left. It's gonna be time to get another one because I just never ever wanna run out. Making sure that you have all of your supplies handy is very, very helpful. And then knowing kind of the sizes that you want. Making sure that you have your meat packaged 
and then labeled because there's nothing worse than opening up a pack of meat and you know you're feeling it and you're like oh this is maybe a roast or something and it turns out to be steaks or whatever and it just you know it has to change up your whole your whole meal plan then so that's what I like to do I like to label exactly what is in it so I have six butterfly steaks in here six medallions which are basically just little steaks that ended up being very very tiny thick but tiny and we call those medallions and so you know it really wasn't enough to make a pack of each there at the end so I just put them all together and that's one and a half pounds total packed in 2019 I do the same for the roasts. Again, I told you guys before, we do not say rump roast or sirloin or anything like that. And here's a pointer for you with your um, hamburger and your stew meat. Pack it flat. We actually have a different system now for our hamburger. However, when we used to pack it into Ziploc uh, freezer bags, I would always pack it flat. It just thaws so, so fast. So that's what I did with my stew meat. I know the stew meat is going to get eaten up quick. That's why I'm not wrapping it in freezer paper. Um, but I do find that, um, I, you know, I just want this to last and to be as top quality as it possibly can be. And so that's why you saw me wrap everything in saran wrap first and then freezer paper. Maybe it's not necessary. It's just how I've always done it. And it works. <laughs> So I really hope that you guys are enjoying this video. I know that this is not going to be suitable for everybody because I did show um, raw meat and a dead animal and whatever. But you know what? Hey, this is a country life and this is where meat comes from. So I do hope that you are enjoying this video. Please give it a thumbs up. And I totally appreciate it if you'd subscribe if you haven't already and just stay up to date on all the latest happenings here. Guess what? We got a guitar. No? No on the guitar? <laughs> well, by the way. I got a new guitar. Yes. It's covered in fingerprint. <laughs> it is very fingerprinty from this okay, angle. But it's black. I so know. So it's really hard. I, I <laughs> cleaned it once, but then I played it, and now it's all fingerprint. You know what you need? One of those microfiber, microfiber cloths. Wouldn't that work nice? Yeah. That would keep it really nice. Why are you smiling at me? Because <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what I used to clean it off. Yeah, I don't want to know what you <laughs> used, okay? But, uh... <laughs> what? What do you want to hear? Whatever. Um, Play us a little Christmas tune? Or is it too early for that? I don't know any Christmas. You don't know any yet? Yeah, okay. I'm not playing Christmas tunes until after uh, Thanksgiving. Oh, okay. But you're going to have to practice them beforehand. Um, let's just... I like it. All right. Thank you. Joe's in there with his microphone. It's empty. We have another bowl. Okay. Back up, Joe, buddy. I Okay, so you just saw us uh, work up all of the uh, venison into ground venison and you know there's a lot of chit chat around here we got a lot of people so there's lots of chit chat but anyway these say ground beef and they are I just bought these particular bags because I could get a thousand of them on Amazon for the best price of anywhere so anyway that's why because I wanted the two pound bags so 
I'm just going to put these up here. We will weigh these. Emily's going to write this down. Emily, you can mark this one at two pounds. So can you write 2019 and then just write two. Very good. Very good. That is going to wrap up the evening here. So I hope that you guys all enjoyed this. Thanks a lot for hanging out with us as we um, just fill up our freezer. With a bunch of weight reduction. If you guys happen to be hunters, I wish all of you luck and have a fantastic day.